Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, we're going to talk about different ways you can organize your plugins inside Studio One. When I first learned how to do audio and recording and mixing, this was the way I would access any plugins that I wanted to add during a mix. I would come to the channel, I would click on a button here, and I would go through and find the one that I wanted. Now, what you may not have noticed is just here at the top of this window, we've got a couple of options. So we can have different folders. So if I know I want some sort of a dynamic plugin, they all are kind of sorted here together. I can sort by vendor, so I can see which plugin companies, maybe I want that FabFilter plugin, I can come here and find it. Or by type, which is like the type or the format of plugin itself. Audio unit, VST, or the stock personas stuff. So this is here. However, I almost never use this window. I prefer to use the browser for most of my plugins. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen this already. But if you're new, I want to show you how that works. So how do we get to the browser? There's a button down here on the bottom right-hand side that says Browse. You can click that. If you hover over it, it will tell us that we can press F5 to open the browser. Fun fact, if you press F7, it actually opens the browser to the Effects tab at the top. So the browser, if we zoom in here, shows us a lot of different things. You can access and do a lot of things from the browser. Specifically, I want to focus on pinwheel, uh, the effects and the instruments. We're going to start with effects. First of all, this browser, like most windows in Studio One, you can customize the size of it. So I tend to keep it over here really small to the side. If you need it to be bigger for whatever reason, you certainly can. First thing I want to point your attention to is the look of the browser itself. So if we click on flat, that just means show me a flat alphabetical list of all plugins I have installed on the system. And as you can see, now they're in alphabetical order. There's no organization here. It's just a flat list. That's fine. One of the things you might notice is over here on the top right-hand side is a Show Thumbnails button. This is the way I believe Studio One comes by default. So if your plugins come with some sort of an, a thumbnail image, like all the Studio One plugins do, they show up like this. And this can be handy just for if you want to visually look and say, yeah, I need red light distortion and you look and you see the red one there and you drag it onto a track. Okay, That's the primary use there. It's just an easier way to see what's going on and to see your plugins. Kind of a, a cool way to do it. I've just gotten used to using the list rather than the images, so I typically have this off. The main reason is I know what plugin I want and I know the name of it. I don't necessarily need to see the icon to get there. Also, when I turn this off, I can see a lot more plugins without having to scroll, right? I can see from flanger down to Xtrem with this view. If I turn the icons on, I can only see from, if I put flanger on the top, I can only see from flanger down to multiband. So I just, I, there's a lot of plugins I don't see on the screen. Rather than scrolling a lot, I'd rather have as many visible as I want, okay? So the flat list is an option. I prefer personally to use a different option. We can't see them all here because the window is small. Remember, I can resize it. So we've got flat, folder, vendor, and type. Same one as I showed you before. I tend to go with vendor because I'm typically thinking, whose plugin do I want? And honestly, nine times out of 10, probably more than that, probably 95 times out of 100, I'm using a Personas plugin. Not because I work for Personas. Well, not only because I work for Personas. Um, I only started working for Personas in late 2019. Prior to that, I used Studio One, and I almost exclusively used Studio One plugins, Personas plugins. Part of that was just, I'm a simple guy. I like simplicity. I don't. If I have to install extra plugins, I don't like to have to make sure that they're updated. If I just use the Studio One plugins, I know they work uh, and they're efficient and they sound good. Um, but also, I don't have to worry about managing all my other plugins. It's not a big deal. It's not a deal breaker. It's just something that I just that was enough of a hurdle for me to say. You know, I'm happy with the ones that come with Studio One because, like I mentioned in the last video, we've got things like Fat Channel, and if you're a Sphere member, you unlock all these different compressors and all these different EQs. So you have have a lot out of the box to use um, before going to your third-party plugins. But if you want third-party, go for it. And when you do, that's where this sort by vendor can be handy. If I know, like predominantly, my window looks like this. I've got the Personas folder open, and I'm just looking at the list of Personas plugins. So I can grab Pro EQ. I can grab, I can scroll down and grab VT1, which I really like lately. Um, they're all kind of right here. A little bit of a scroll shows me every 
PreSonus plugin. Then if I need another one, like I need Melodyne for some reason, or I want to grab one of these Autotune plugins, um, if you haven't seen my Autotune video, it's kind of fun, uh, or a FabFilter limiter, these are all up here waiting for me, but I typically have them closed because I'm primarily, like I said, using Personas plugins. Um, if that's the way you like to work, that's a handy way of doing it. It sorts by plugins, and that's nice. The other way we can sort is by folder, and this can be handy if you, A, if you have a lot of different plugins, or B, if you're just not sure what each plugin does, and the way your brain works is like, I think I want like a delay. Then you can come here and just look and say, okay, all my delays are together. Um, this is handy. Honestly, I'm, even as I'm saying this, I'm considering maybe using this because it organizes them a little more together, which can be handy. The problem is like, if I'm looking for VT1, that to me, that's an EQ and a compressor and a channel strip. So I might look under EQ or dynamics before I come down to the mixing category. What's cool about these is they're organized by default. So you can see like the pitch and time, a lot of my auto-tune plugins went in here. Um, some of the different just tool-based things went here, uh, but we can also create our own folder. So anytime you're in Studio One, especially in something like the browser, if you right-click, it's gonna probably give you some options of things to do. So if I right-click in here, I can create a new folder called Awesome Sauce, and then I can put whatever plugins I want in there. So that one's actually inside that folder. I can bring it up here, maybe bring it down here. There we go, now I have an awesome sauce folder. And since it's sorted alphabetically, if I want that to be at the top, I could do something like rename it to, you know, asterisk awesome sauce. Now it's gonna be at the top of my list and I can maybe put my favorites there. However, that's not a great example because we actually already have a favorites tab up here, which you might've seen. So right here, it says favorites. If I click on it, it shows me these plugins. Now if I wanna add one to my favorite, I can just come and find it, right click on it and choose favorite. So if I choose favorite on this uh, gate, I click favorite, now it shows up in my list of favorites. So if you're really simple and you only really have three or four plugins that you reach for, you might wanna make those a favorite. And then this favorite list will show up at the top regardless of what uh, setting or how you're sorting your list. So if I'm sorting by vendor, I can have my vendor list down here, but I can also have my favorites showing and I can have any plugins from any vendor be a favorite. And I can also add them by dragging and dropping because Studio One. Um, so now I can see that all of these are my favorites and they're there. Mix effects, this has to do with our mix effects engine. They're all here kind of in one setting. And then effects chains are presets that you can make of multiple plugins in a channel. So if I created this really cool, you know, set of plugins in a row, like Empire After Fat Channel going into our chorus plugin and I dial in something amazing and I want to save that as like channel strip, like a, an effects chain. I can do that by coming up here, pressing the plus sign, uh, actually no, pressing the little drop down, scrolling to the bottom and choosing store effects chain, call this more awesome sauce. And then it's going to show up in my effects chain folder here. Let's see where to go. More awesome sauce right there. So they're sorted in alphabetical order. I don't use effects chains as much as you might think, but they are handy, especially if I'm dialing in like a cool Empire tone that has like six plugins after Empire to create a really cool stereo effect. I'll drop it in there. And as you can see, I've got some of those here. Different, um, like a beat delay, some ambient guitars that I created. Those are all done using effects chains. And then when I drag those in, it brings in all the plugins at once just makes for a nice, easier workflow. But we don't need to see those all the time, usually, for me at least. So I have all these folders at the top closed so that I can just see what I wanna see. So maybe your workflow would be keep the favorites open and then keep the personas open. And now you can see all the personas plugins and then you can quickly get to your favorites here at the top. Um, one of my favorites I always keep is the Fat Channel and I've got that set to the default to compressor and EQs that I like. So when I drag that in, it looks like this and I'm ready to go. EQs on, compressors off. That's kind of how I like to rock it. Okay, so that's how to set things up and organize things inside of the effects pane in Studio One. Couple more things really quickly. If there are certain plugins you don't want to see, so for example, if I go to type, I can see that I have audio unit and VST versions of some of these plugins. I don't really need both, right? I installed them that way, but I really am just using VST3 for the most part. I can come over here, click on this little wrench over here, 
and I can just hide the ones that I don't want to see. For example, these AU Bandpass, all these plugins, I believe those are the default plugins that come with GarageBand. I'm not using those, so I don't want those in my list. I can get rid of this one and this one by just deselecting this little dot. Now I won't see those AU plugins in my list. And if I decide, like, there's a couple of these that I don't really use all that often. I want to keep them installed, but I don't want to see them in my list. Like for example, this listen to receiver I've hidden because I never need to see that. I use that plugin in another piece of software entirely. I don't need to see those there. Then I click the wrench again and things are a little bit cleaner. Or let's say I just want to leave Autotune Pro, but I don't want to see all of these in my list. I can just quickly click and drag and select those, and now my list is a lot cleaner. So if you like to clean things up a little bit and make things easier to find just what you need, you can do that. You can even do that with the Stock Studio One plugins. If you never use, uh, for example, for some reason, I've just never used Tricomp all that much, right? Or, you know, rarely use Tone Generator. You know, maybe I'll go in and hide some of those. The thing is, though, once you hide it, you got to remember that it's hidden. And you can always see it by clicking on the wrench, but in case you want to make your life a little bit easier, maybe use the favorite setting for your favorite ones and then leave the ones that you might need occasionally down here so you can still access them. And then finally, there is a different way of looking at things, more like icons like this. So here's my categories and my presets show up like this. If that connects with you on a personal level, go for it. I personally just like these nice alphabetized lists and having different ways to sort them. One more thing, everything I've shown you about the way effects work, it's pretty much the same for instruments as well. So if your primary form of plugins are virtual instruments, if you come over to this window, it's just about the same. We got a few different categories that make sense for instruments versus effects, but we still have the ability to sort by vendor, by type, and by folder and flat. We still have the ability to create our favorites. Um, we just have... For me, at least, I have fewer here because I don't do a lot of virtual instruments. You may have a huge list here, and it makes sense for you to figure out how you like to sort those so you can find them quickly, access your favorite plugins, your favorite presets, and all that. So not the most exciting thing. We didn't make any music today in this video, but hopefully I've given you a couple of ideas of ways to make your life a little bit easier, streamline your workflow a little bit more so you can keep making music and making it efficiently and making more music and all that fun stuff. Thanks so much for watching. If you like our videos, would you do me a favor? Like this video and also subscribe if you're not subscribed. It really does help us out. All right, thanks for watching. See you.